finally, 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 I'm back. So, I was kind of just sitting here waiting for some actual good news to happen. I didn't want to burn through all of the ideas I have down in the early part of June because we still have the rest of June to go through. We got to go through July. We still got some of August where we won't have football. So, I didn't want to expel everything in the first two weeks of June, and I was hoping that some news would happen before then so I could put videos out, but nothing was happening, so I had to just bite the bullet and start putting more videos out. Um, the only news that happened was that whole Drew Brees fiasco, which I was not going to get involved in. That is not my area to talk about things. That is not my place to discuss anything, so I just kept myself out of that. And it's sad that we didn't get to see any other good news happen, no signings, no none of that. But it's okay because we still have things to talk about. And today we're going to be talking about what to expect from the 2020 New Orleans Saints free agent class. So this was actually a, an idea given to me from Evan a couple weeks back, but I was hanging on to it because it's a good one. So today we're going to be going over that. The players that I think are going to be only depth pieces that won't even sniff the field, I did not write anything about. Um, I left them in the depth column, which I'll read their names off at the end of this video. But the players that I do think will be making some sort of impact, whether it be during the preseason, during the regular season, uh, two years from now, whatever, will be in this video and will actually be um, forces that I'm going to be talking about because that's important. Um, besides that though, we're going to get into it and, uh, before, well, actually before I start the video, uh, I'm going to be having a, another fishing video coming out today on my other channel. So I'm going to leave the link to that in the description of this video. So in case you want to go check it out, you can, uh, it's a pretty fun one, but let's go ahead and get into today's video on the Saints channel, which like I said, is what to expect from the 2020 New Orleans Saints free agent class. So the first player I put down, because I'm pretty sure it's the first player or splash player that we picked up, is safety Malcolm Jenkins. And Malcolm Jenkins making his return to New Orleans wasn't the most unexpected thing ever. We were actually having negotiations with him last year that just fell through because we couldn't hit the mark on money. Uh, but many people didn't think this year that we were going to be able to get the deal done with the rising star, youngster, strong safety Von Bell making a splash last year. Um, but then we ended up losing Von Bell. And losing Von Bell, letting go of Von Bell, whatever you want to call it, 100% opened up the need for a safety, a new safety for the New Orleans Saints. And Malcolm Jenkins, in my opinion, was the best available option on the market to fill this role that we needed to be filled, not just because of his skill and playing ability, but because of his fantastic, and I mean fantastic, leadership last season the 32 year old safety had 63 solo tackles he allowed 30 receptions on 50 targets had two and a half sacks eight passes defended and four forced fumbles his ability to force fumbles hit running backs extremely hard issue big hits sack the quarterback apply pressure definitely lead me to believe that he can be a very 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 good and can be extremely fine as the New Orleans Saints new strong safety uh, expects two to three interceptions from Malcolm Jenkins he is a lot better in coverage than Von Bell was but as a strong safety the opportunity to pick passes off doesn't come as often as if you were going to be playing as free safety he will spend plays as an edge rusher in the box, lurking to stop runs, etc. But he will make the best out of the opportunities that he is given. And I think that will lead to him picking off two to three passes this year, maybe for big returns. He's been a very good interception returnman in years past. I think he will have around 80 to 90 tackles for sure. He will have three to four sacks and will provide amazing leadership in grooming players, young players like Chauncey Garner-Johnson and Marcus Williams. So I think Malcolm Jenkins is definitely somebody to watch as a very, very good role filler this year in this year's 2020 New Orleans Saints free agent class. I think he's going to do a great job and I think that the New Orleans Saints are going to love the fact that that we once again reunited. So, Malcolm Jenkins, let's move on to the next player, which I have Emmanuel Sanders. And man, oh man, is this one exciting. In 2019, Emmanuel Sanders had 869 yards and five touchdowns on 66 receptions. 
He will do better in New Orleans without a single doubt in my mind. Think about it. Emmanuel Sanders last year spent the first half of the season playing with Joe Flacco, who is currently not a starter, and Jimmy Garoppolo, who throws nothing but five-yard slant and missed him for the Super Bowl winning deep ball. Having Drew Brees should absolutely bring Emmanuel Sanders to life and result in an all-around overhaul of the New Orleans Saints offense. No more relying on Michael Thomas every single play. Emmanuel Sanders can still fly pretty well. He's shown the ability to throw passes in trick plays, one uh, especially against the New Orleans Saints last year that resulted in a touchdown. I think Sean Payton's going to have fun with this dude, and I think Drew Brees is going to love finally having a good number two wide receiver because that's something he's been missing for years and it makes me so happy to know that he won't have to have this problem for a very long time and we're going to be able to groom players like Traquan Smith without him having to have the pressure of being that fill-in number two wide receiver he can develop on his own pace the next leading Saints wide receiver last year had 421 yards and that was Ted Ginn Jr. after Michael Thomas the receiving leaders were Jared Cook and Al Alvin Kamara, who's a running back. Alvin Kamara should not have more receiving yards than Ted Ginn Jr. Um, I'm excited for this. Emmanuel Sanders will ex- like 100% eclipse 1,000 yards and score around eight touchdowns this year. That's my expectations for him, and I feel like you guys should have similar expectations as well. Let's move on to the third player who I have, Mr. Crab Leg Theft. Jameis Winston. This was an interesting one. Whether it be assigning to boost Taysom Hill's competition and play, or Sean actually sees Jameis as a legitimate competitor for the future starting job like he should, uh, I think Jameis Winston either way has a chance to steal the future of the New Orleans Saints from the likes of Taysom Hill. Uh, Every QB throws a ton of interceptions in their first year under Bruce Arians. Like, seriously, dude, just go look up Carson Paul... Carson Palmer's stats in his first year with Bruce Arians. His 30 interceptions, of course, were a huge and probably the sole reason the Tampa Bay Buccaneers went negative last year. But we can't completely erase the fact that Jameis did what not many quarterbacks can do, and that means he threw for 5,000 yards and 30 touchdowns in the same season. He's lost 17 pounds this offseason and got LASIK eye surgery. He wants to be better. And man, Taysom should be absolutely terrified. Jameis Winston has shown the ability to have extremely good accuracy. His amazing deep ball strength has shown as well. He just needs quarterback IQ. And who better to get it from than veteran greatest quarterback of all time, Drew Brees. I think Jameis Winston is going to show that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers shouldn't have let him go. And I think it's going to blow up in their face. I think that this dude is a serious, and I mean serious, contender for the New Orleans Saints starting job. The way he's grinding, the way that he has shown the ability to play quarterback in a fantastic way, just needs to eliminate turnovers. I think that Jameis Winston isn't beyond repair. I think that if we really buckle down and want this dude to succeed, which he wants himself to succeed, so I don't see why we wouldn't, it could turn out really good for us, and I'm excited to see how it goes. So, Sean Payton, what do you want here? Do you want Jameis Winston or do you want Taysom Hill? He's already stated that it's between one of them two, and I'm really excited to see which one pans out, which one wins the offseason, uh, the, the training camp and all that stuff. We will see who gets this job, and I'm really hoping that Sean Payton makes the right choice, and I don't think we should go against the choice he makes because he sees these players every day. I just think Jameis Winston is a very, very, very sneaky contender for the New Orleans Saints starting job after Drew Brees retires, and I think that if he wants it, he really can go get it. I, I, I can see it happening. So let's move on to the next player, and that is Ty Montgomery. And all I have to say about this is gadget, gadget, and gadget. (laughs) Ty Montgomery is someone that never really had one true position. He's bounced around at wide receiver, running back, whatever, and has proven his worth in this league as a dual threat player, Uh, a wide receiver slash running back that can produce in either realm. He, in my eyes, was always one of those players who didn't have their skill set harnessed as much as it should have been. Over his career, Ty Montgomery has had 224 rushing attempts for 1,035 yards and 7 touchdowns. He has also had 120 receptions for 982 yards and 3 touchdowns. 
He's not an every down player, but he's someone that can step in at multiple positions and make a difference. Sean Payton has loved these players, and he's shown that ever since he had success with Taysom Hill, the gadget is the move for him. Expect about two to three hundred rushing yards and two to three rushing touchdowns from Ty Montgomery, as well as three to four hundred receiving yards and four to five receiving touchdowns. I think he's going to be someone who is involved in the New Orleans Saints offense about as much as Ted Ginn Jr. was last year, but on the ground as well. I think there's going to be some shifty plays going on in this offense with this dude, and I think he's going to make a heck of a run out of it, and I'm super excited to see him in a New Orleans Saints uniform. So the last players we have are Anthony Chiquillo, Michael Burton, who will block a lot, and James Hurst. I left these players in the depth column, and I'm not really going to go in-depth about them, get it, <laughs> but uh, because I don't really think they're going to do much other than provide good depth for this team. So Emmanuel Sanders, my expectation for him is over 1,000 yards and around eight touchdowns. Uh, my expectations for Malcolm Jenkins are three to four sacks, 80 to 90 tackles, and two to three interceptions. Uh, my expectation for Jameis Winston are a fantastic preseason and a legitimate fight from Jameis for next year's starting job. I'm dead serious. He's more than capable. And my expectation for Ty Montgomery would be two to three hundred rushing yards, two to three rushing touchdowns, three to four hundred receiving yards, and four to five receiving touchdowns. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm a little bit rusty if you can't tell. Um, good production and good videos are coming soon. I just wanted to get something out for you guys because I know um, the Saints content not being here has been a little bit of a drag. But there's going to be more to talk about. I have more topics and I'll see you boys in the next one. Adios.